Mr. Moot, as many countries are facing a major financial crisis, they have cut down their subsidies for renewable energies. What impact does this have? Yeah, thanks a lot, first of all. Um, I believe what we need to bear in mind is when supporting renewables, which is done today, that we just started around 2009 in all member states with policies for renewables. Before that, we didn't have any kind of legislation, no directive in place, but we had a few European states, member states, not least Germany, going forward with renewables policies. Now, member states just have started then in 2009 to develop their supports as well. The economic crisis is now finally as well hitting the renewable sector. And some of the member states are trying to cut back their budget deficit by as well reducing the tariffs and the support that is provided to renewables. I guess, and one of the things that um, need to be taken into account is that we need to see that support schemes need to adapt on the one hand to the quick development of technologies. We have a reduction, a tremendous reduction of costs not least in the photovoltaic sector, but as well in other sectors where the costs have decreased. But um, really controversially is, of course, changes that happened in some member states. In Portugal, for instance, in Spain as well, in the Czech Republic, really sudden changes to their support schemes and retrospectively, which means that this has an impact already on what had been said, what they would get as of the past. So that has a fundamental impact on investors' confidence, has a negative impact on the investments which are done. And this is actually controversial to what you would like to do in an economic crisis, because what you would like to do is attract as much uh, as possible private investments. And you don't want to have even more public money being spent, but private investments going into there. And what you need to provide for that is investor confidence, though. The political stability is of utmost importance and I think member states should not underestimate the negative impact that this has. It's not a joke we are talking about, but we are really deleting, we are kind of scrapping a country from the European map for an investor as soon as you do these retrospective changes. Germany is considered to take the leadership in showing how the energy vendor could function well. But we also face problems here. For example, the priority access for renewables causes problems to our neighbors in the electricity markets. And there are also more obstacles. Which ones do you see and how can they be overcome? I guess, first of all, we need to acknowledge that up to 2009, we did not have a purely European success story for renewables, but it was a few countries that advanced the development of renewables. And this includes, of course, as well Sweden and Denmark, for instance, but as well Spain and then finally Germany. With the legislations that were put in place, with the supports as well provided to the sector in order to get them into the main market to have a large scale deployment. Europe needs to see what is happening in Germany. We are seeing that un other member states are now looking into the so-called Energiewende, what is happening in Germany and what kind of impact that has on the energy system. But we have still completely different markets, market realities, infrastructures and majority as well of certain technologies and segments in those member states that need to be borne in mind when we talk about the market realities. Hence, there is certain lessons to be learned from Germany, but not all of it can be copied. And I think Germany as well, of course, needs to learn from other member states what they have done in really developing and rolling the internal market, trying to achieve a European internal market. Now, the priority access for renewables is a key element as well of the Renewable Energy Directive which was transposed into national law in 2010 by the member states, the European law, the directive, and is a fundamental key issue for allowing renewables producers to access the market because we still have a discrimination against renewables producers. What it has created, of course, as well today is rather linked to the low costs we have in the electricity sector, and this is mainly where the people always point to, 
leaving out heating and cooling in the transport sector, but in the electricity sector what we see happening is that due to the low marginal costs of wind and photovoltaic, the prices of electricity go down on the spot markets and hence it gets more interesting as well for neighboring countries to buy that cheaper electricity. And this is what they're doing. It's not that they are forced to take over some capacities, but of course there is an economic aspect to it and that's why they are taking it over. Talking about the European energy vendor, we ha have to talk about the internal market that has to be restructured. We talk about new market design, including the renewable energies. Uh, would you please comment on this? We are still uh, aiming for having a completion of the internal market. This is an aim, a goal of European energy policy since the 90s to come to a single European energy market. Market reality today says that, for instance, we have 17 member states still with regulated electricity prices. So we can't speak of a single European energy market yet. This is still an aim and the European Commission and the heads of states endorse that of the member states that they want to achieve by 2014, so next year, the internal market. If in reality that is possible, that needs to be seen, certainly all elements or criteria that are enshrined in legislations need to be fulfilled by then. This is the aim 2014. We need to complete this internal market in order to allow for free movement as well of energy, of electricity to trade these goods. It is a good as well energy, electricity in the system, in the grids is a good that needs to be traded. But what we see as well Due to the low marginal cost of renewables and what I said before, the impact on the spot market prices, that the question is now whether it is possible to refinance yourself as an investor via the energy only markets, which we are aiming for, have created, and whether it is possible to really get the investments and the return on investments back from that market. This is where the discussion comes on in on capacity markets. The question is, do we need to have a payment for capacities as well? So certain capacities which are hold back and here would really underline, we should not talk only about fossil fuel capacities and most people think about gas capacities. But of course, in such a market, what we rather need to tend to is look into flexibility options. Talk about a flexibility market, not a capacity market. And such a flexibility market needs to include demand side management. Look what the consumers can do with smart metering, for instance, really intelligent information and acting and reacting to it. What can we do on infrastructure side? Build out more infrastructure to allow for a bigger balancing area as well, a flow. And what can we do when it comes to uh, to capacities. If we build capacities and that are financed out of such a mechanism, then we at least believe that they should fulfill certain emissions performance standards, so have low emissions, not that we just subsidize and have a bailout program for existing conventional uh, power plants, and of course that they have quick ramping times. That means that they can react quickly, flexibly to any variable input which we are getting from the renewables electricity side.